Hello, my beauties! I am starting out with this bell costume from CostumeSuperCenter.com and my lovely wig from Here He Goes. I usually start with foundation already on, but for whatever reason today you get to watch me do the very exciting process of blending out some pale people fluid onto my face. As far as eyebrows go, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being Sleeping Beauty brows and 1 being Snow White brows, Belle comes in at a modest 5. She's right in between stickly and thickly, so if you have room to shape your own brows, draw them as such. Now for the eyeliner. Hear me out here. Belle is often portrayed with a heavy emphasis on a dark upper lash line, thicker lashes, and that dark line that extends down into the inner corners of the eyes to really draw attention to the shape of them and make them really big but kind of cat-like at the same time and lift it on the outer corners. I don't have gigantic almond-shaped eyes, so the next best thing was to try to fake it with some exaggerated eyeliner. Thicker and lifted towards the outer edge and exaggerated down past the inner edge. Then the NYX Jumbo Pencil Routine, but on steroids this time. I'm really bringing that down way below my waterline so it acts as a continuation of the eye, making them look much bigger. Looks silly up close, but has the right effect from a few feet away. Even though this is a more theatrical glam makeup, you still want to blend that out a little at the bottom. And of course, add lashes. Boom! Instantly big bell eyeballs. Eye bells. Ball eyes. What? Okay, so anyway, now we want to add a little blush for some rosy cheeks. Contouring, because, you know, princesses contour. And some highlight because we're 3D Belle, not 2D Belle. Line your lips with a soft pink liner and then fill them in with any kind of light pink or peach lipstick. And that's it for Glam Belle. Now there's no Disney princess movie better equipped for a glam and gore spin than Beauty and the Beast. It's built right into the name, but I'm sorry to disappoint those of you who are really looking forward to seeing me dressed up as a sexy beast creature. It's just been done too many times and frankly I'm not sure you could handle just how attractive I am when I'm snarling and hairy. Sorry. This gore twist is a story of best friend betrayal by none other than Lumiere. Let this be a lesson to you kids. If you're a bookworm, it might be a bad idea to be biffles with a candle. Read by smartphone light instead. Anyway, it's time to... Got slop show up. First, to add teeth. There's lots of ways you could do this, like cutting up fake nails using cotton and latex, etc. But I'm using a really easy and fast way today that we've only used one other time so far on this channel. And that is prosthetic transfers. These particular transfers are Got Flesh Prosthetics, which you can find on GamutStudios.com. They're made by Brian Seip, who is an incredible SFX artist with a really impressive body of work, and he was nice enough to send me these to use for this series. So if you need exact links to his site, I will leave them in the description below. As far as putting these babies on, it is so simple and very similar to the process of applying a temporary tattoo. First, I'm using 99% alcohol to clean off the back of the prosthetic. This will remove any powder residue and make the prosthetic sticky. Then taking the blank transfer paper that it comes with, you're going to lightly but evenly press the prosthetic onto it. I did this off camera so that I could lay it down flat on the table. Once it's attached, cut away any excess transfer paper. Then slowly peel away the clear film. We're ready to apply. Remove any makeup where the prosthetic will be laying and wipe over quickly with 99% alcohol. This ensures that there's less oil or any residue that could make it harder for the prosthetic to adhese well. Then it's time to give yourself a prosade mustache. Make sure you don't have the teeth flipped upside down, lay it directly over your lip, press down, grab a wet paper towel, and then start wetting the back of the transfer paper. Just like a temporary tattoo. Fun fact, when I was a kid, I thought the best place to put a temporary tattoo was directly in the middle of my giant forehead. And I often did. Anyway, when that's thoroughly saturated, the transfer paper should slide right off. Voila! Look at those chompers! These transfers blend really nice already, but if you have any stray pieces along your edges, you can easily dissolve them with some 99% alcohol on a Q-tip. Repeat this process for the lower teeth. When you're done applying both, use a translucent powder to remove the stickiness. Before we get charred, I'm going to quickly paint the teeth white and the spaces around the teeth black using water-activated paints. Then I'm spraying water onto them and blotting them lightly with a wipe so that they don't look so clean and pretty. I know some of you are thinking this burnt bell makeup is done very similarly to the Deadpool tutorial, in which case, you're right! Except this one is way closer to looking like a testicle of teeth because we actually have our teeth exposed. Speaking of which, because I filmed this tutorial a year before I did Deadpool, I purposely made the Deadpool video much more of a transformation and less of a tutorial video since I knew that I'd be going over the same gelatin technique in full when the Princess series started up. So any questions that you might have had for the Deadpool makeup should be answered here and now. You're going to need to make some hot FX gelatin fast. Why am I British? Click here now or check the description for videos that go over exactly how to do this. Then come back. Okay, this gelatin is a little pink in color because I stirred a tiny amount of fake blood into the mix in between the melting process. You could also add cream paint, 
water activated paints. You could even chop off part of a red lipstick. Use what red makeup you have to tint the color a bit. Just like we did for the pink fake tongue and the green toxic mermaid scales. A key component of this burn is to use cotton balls as well. You can do it without them if you don't have any, but you might look a little bit more like Lana Del Zombe without them. I also recommend wiping off the foundation on the half of your face that you're going to burn because it helps the gelatin stick better. Heck, while you're at it, rip off them lashes and smudge your eye makeup. I only put on my waterproof liner today, not the fireproof stuff. I can't stress this enough. In order to avoid it being an actual burnt bell, please be extremely careful when using hot gelatin. I always wait a couple of minutes after melting mine before I even think about using it, and then I test it on the back of my hand first, and if that's not too hot, I test it again on the inside of my wrist before putting it anywhere on my face. Anywho, you want to begin applying the gelatin onto your skin. I use a tongue depressor for this so I can throw it away after. As you go, rip off small pieces of cotton from your cotton balls and lay them on top. You want to do this as you go because hot gelatin is sticky, but cool gelatin is not. Cover the cotton up in more gelatin and keep going! The cotton in this case gives the burn a really nice mixed texture, color, and structure. You can control the shape a little bit better than you could without the cotton. You can make it more stringy, keep some areas extra light, and it ends up looking like this goo of melted flesh exposed to muscle and ligaments. As you work, your gelatin will cool and you'll be able to do more with it for a short time. I like to dab <laughs> I like to dab at it with the tongue depressor so it has more rough texture in some areas or stick it down and stretch it across another area so that it's stringy. The more you play with gelatin, the more you'll figure out how to manipulate it. If laying down gelatin starts pulling other gelatin straight off your face or it becomes too hard to work with, it's too cooled and it's time to heat it up again. You can use cotton to deform the shape of features as well. I place some cotton here to bridge the space between the cheek and the side of the nose and then I cover it up in gelatin to really alter the shape. I'm doing the same to connect my jaw and earlobe because, you know, facial features just kind of go out the door in these types of scenarios. Continue this down as far as you like. I went all the way down the neck and over to the shoulder, but looking back a year and a half later, I wish I had gone all the way down the arm as well. But I, what can you do? If you're wearing a wig, you can drag this over past the hairline to make the burn more gruesome, but be warned it will most likely not come off because the cotton reinforces the gelatin and it makes it really strong. You need to melt the gelatin and cotton back down by soaking it in a tub of hot water to remove it. When you've applied the gelatin everywhere you want, there's many different ways you can paint this. I've already done a darker burn tutorial with latex, so for this one I wanted to go with a little lighter, more fleshy color. I'm starting by covering the topmost areas in my foundation. I'm using a sponge so that the application is uneven and light. You might wonder why I made my gelatin pink in the first place if I was just going to cover this up later, but as you'll see, the pink shows through the deeper layers of the gelatin and makes the top burnt flesh look more translucent like real skin. You can paint regular colored gelatin to look similar, but this is much faster and it ends up looking a lot better anyway. Following that, I'm using alcohol activated paints to add reds and browns across the burn to create more dimension, as well as pulling some of those colors lightly along the edge of the burn into the middle of the face to give it a transition into our normal skin. I'm using a yellow cream paint on a sponge to sweep a little color in the highlight areas of the burn. And to make everything look more charred, I'm lightly adding black soot in random places. This stuff is a specific FX product that I have in my kit for burns, road rash, general dirtiness, etc. But if you don't have that, you can also scrape off and smush up bits of black or gray eyeshadow for the same effect. Like beauty makeup, FX can be a push and pull with colors to get exactly what you want. Sometimes you need to add colors to blend out an eyeshadow or to go back in with a dark color if you've blended something out too far, and this is no different. Here I'm adding red cream paint to bring back some color as well as putting that red around my eye. Always use cream slash grease paints or water activated paints over the eye, never alcohol activated. This should be obvious, but just in case, it's not. I'm back to the black set and this time I'm taking this on my sponge and applying it right onto the edge of our burn. I set the sponge down at the exact edge and then lightly sweep away from the burn while slightly pulling my hand away so that it lightly tapers off. I've found the mix of the random pattern from the sponge with that swiping motion really polishes off burns in a nice way. Finish it off by taking a small amount of your foundation on a big powder brush and lightly sweeping it over the burn edge to really smoke out that area and add the illusion of translucency. Now put lube on your face, cause burns should look wet and juicy. Finally, add in one extra creepy white mesh contact for that boiled eyeball kind of look, and destroy your costume by throwing black soot on it, burning it, whatever. Mm, maybe, maybe take it off before burning, but yeah, you get the idea. That's it. Thanks for watching, beauties. I hope you feel like a princess. He loves me. What the fuck? It doesn't love me that much.
Be our guest. Be our guest. Tie a napkin around your neck, Sherry, and we'll provide the rest. Look to your hot or doors, we only live to serve. Try the grey stuff, it's delicious. Don't believe me, ask the dishes. They can sing, they can dance, they're after all, sir. How do you know? This is France, and our dinner here is never second best. Good. Uh, <laughs> what am I? Positive Disneyland. Excuse me, but I did love The Little Mermaid, because I thought I was The Little Mermaid reincarnated. That's another story for another time. Seated. I had red hair and blue eyes and a, and a fin, so. You don't know I didn't have a fin. Did you know me when I was a child? No, you didn't. Check out this fashion statement. I went my skin back and forth. I went my skin back and forth. Right. Make it tough for you. Barely even friends. Now, why are you dating someone when you're barely even friends? <laughs> what is Disney teaching our children? Disney teaches us teaches. all. You can be barely even friends. And then somebody bends, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Unexpectedly. Is that appropriate? I don't think so. But I didn't write it, so don't get mad at me. Is my contact over my eye? Nope. Where the f did it go? Feels like it's in my eye. Oh, I see. There Ew, it is. my gosh.